Hey everybody, it's your girl Mimi of Mimi's Mocha Treats, and today I will show you how I created this sweet cherry blossom themed cake for a baby shower a few years ago. Now, the clear indicator that spring is right around the corner in the DC area is when the cherry blossoms begin to bloom, and for me, this is the absolute best time of the year. I know longer days, flip-flops, beach time, and t-shirt season is fast coming. So I've lived in the area for about 30 years, and yes, I just aged myself. <laughs> and I have only participated in the Cherry Blossom Festivals once. And let me tell you, that was not only the first, but it was the last time for me. One year, I decided to go down to the Tidal Basin to take in all things cherry blossoms. I mean, I frolicked in the trees with the best of them. I literally was out there helping other individuals take photos. I was hugging and kissing babies. I mean, I was all in. But baby, I learned my lesson. I have never dealt with allergies before. So when I went indoors and started feeling stuffy and experiencing watery eyes, I was done. <laughs> so my brother told me that cherry blossoms are literally the devil in person and should be admired from afar. That was a major lesson that I will never forget. So unfortunately, I will not be out there frolicking with the best of them ever again. Okay, so let's get into this cake. Now, this cake request was actually made during the height of COVID. So I wanna say it was mm, maybe May of 20, yeah, no, it was May 2020. Um, and because they couldn't have a big celebration, we decided to move forward with a small seven inch round tier so that they could share it between the two of them and maybe a couple of family members um, that wanted to come and try to celebrate with them. So we did the seven inch tier, serves about 18 guests. And unfortunately, because this cake required a very quick turnaround time, I decided to go ahead and use buttercream to, you know, crumb coat the cake instead of my typical ganache. Um, and here you'll see that I am rolling out the fondant that I colored in red. And if you wanna learn how to easily get the color red without using a lot of food dye, please comment below and I'll definitely share a tip on that. Um, but I discovered these, what they call like Swazi sticks. Um, this young lady named Ginger from Icing on the Cake. Um, she and I met each other at the National Capital Area Cake Show a few years prior. And she was selling these sticks and basically they come in different sizes. So you can use them as guides when you're rolling at your fondant or your modeling chocolate. And I really, really like them for smaller orders so that I don't have to pull out my sheeter and use that instead. Um, it's really, really nice. They're really, really convenient and they're actually water resistant. Now I'm going to see if she is still selling them. And if so, I am going to add a link to her page below in the comment section. Now, in case you are wondering, yes, I am a paneling cake artist. I, <laughs> for the life of me, I have never been able to perfect the, you know, putting the fondant over and then uh, over the cake and then, you know, sort of like pushing down on the sides to cover the cake. Like I cannot cover a cake from the top and have it look clean and um, crisp and get those sharp edges that I like. So a few years ago, I just said, hey, why fight it? Do something different, try something new. And I decided to start paneling my cakes and it was the best decision that I ever made. Um, a couple reasons why. One, I get those sharp edges, my cakes look clean and pristine, and I'm able to save a lot of time because I found that I was spending so much time trying to perfect the over fondant method that I wasted a lot of time. And now when you have a lot of cake orders coming in, time is of the essence. So I started paneling. I absolutely love it. Um, and if you want to watch um, some clips on how I do it, just let me know in the comments and I will definitely share those tips. Now, I made the gum paste flowers ooh, in record time, child. I, 
normally, you know, you have a few weeks to create um, the flowers and the florals for a cake. But because again, there was this quick turnaround time, I think I spent like four hours straight one day just sitting down and making every single blossom for this cake. Um, I actually like making cherry blossoms, especially since I can't, you know, experience and enjoy the real thing. So, you know, working on this was pretty fun. And then I was able to create different styles and looks with each cherry blossom. Um, as you can see here, I'm using floral tape to cover the wires and to bunch them in small groups. And then I'm taking my small scissors and cutting it into the um, floral tape so that it can give that look of you know when you see branches and they're sort of like roughed up and you know they're not smooth and clean um, and then later on what I did is that I actually took some additional luster dust and added them to the floral tape at the base to give them a little bit of depth and color. Okay, so now it's time for me to start assembling the cherry blossom stems. Um, in my mind, what I wanted to happen was to have the stems start at the base of the cake and go up at a diagonal, but then have some cherry blossoms actually floating above the cake. And so what I did is I took a couple pieces of 18 gauge wire, wrapped them together and started assembling the cherry blossom bunches that I had created earlier to the wire using floral tape. Um, then what I did is I took a piece of the wire, one of the wires, bent them at a 90 degree angle, and that bend or that wire that was bent was what I used to anchor the, the branch to the cake. As you guys can tell, I really do hate doing voiceover, so please, please be patient with me. All right, so then you'll see me also later on, I'll take the scissors and I'll chop up that floral wire to give it again a branchy look and then I also went back and took petal dust and lightly dusted them so that they you know had a little bit more depth to them. So once I finished assembling the cherry blossom stems, I then took out my steamer and lightly steamed each petal because I wanted to prevent any of the dust hitting my cake. Um, this actually causes it to sort of like melt into the gum paste. Um, it gives like a really nice little, for one second it looks glossy, but then it goes uh, like matte. It's really, really pretty effect. Okay, so let's get back to this cake. Um, so I came across this cherry blossom stencil that I've had for a while now. I don't know where it came from. <laughs> um, I, I don't know if it was in an award packet um, from one of, uh, you know, a cake show that I had pre previously uh, participated in. I don't know, but it was the perfect stencil for this cake. So what I did was is I took some white petal dust and mixed it with some cornstarch and then took a big fluffy brush and sort of stenciled the color all over the cake. Um, I like the overall look of it. It gave like this really light um, feathery airbrush look. Um, and then what I did is I went or was, sorry, um, I went back and pulled out my edible gold luster dust and I mixed it with some Everclear and sort of just splattered it all over the cake using a paintbrush. And then once that dried, I went back and said, you know what, it needs a little bit more dimension, a little bit more razzle dazzle. So I proceeded to add edible gold dragees to the cake. And I really, really like the overall look. I like how it added a little bit more dimension to the cake, um, made it a little bit sexier.
Okay, we've reached the end. Now it's time for me to assemble the cake fully. As you can see here, I started adding the branches using my long nose needle pliers. Again, my BFFs. <laughs> and then you'll see here too, as I was putting in the cake, it sort of ripped. I don't know if you can see that right there, but there was no need to fret because I pulled out some additional fondant and then just sort of mended it. And then I used my sculpting tools to seal up the hole and no one knew because it was a smooth finish. So again, I thank you for taking the time to watch this video and learn all things cherry blossom cake. If you like this video and wanna learn more about how to create really funky and fun cake designs, please consider giving me a like and a follow. We appreciate your time and as always, we hope you have an amazingly sweet day.